Hey friends, in today's video we're going to create a piece of gelled fantasy art featuring our fantastic model, Haley S. Cosplay. Hey folks, my name is David Bird with Reality Reimagine and welcome to the channel. I'm an award-winning photographer, Photoshop artist, and educator with a focus on fantasy and cosplay art. It is a thrill to share my knowledge and imagination with you and help you create your own artwork. This video series is sponsored by McKenna Pro, an industry-leading professional print lab for photographers and designers. They have a vast array of mediums to share your images, whether it be traditional paper prints, metal, canvas, or even weathered pieces of wood. Their albums are some of the best in the industry and their customer service is compared to none. Whether you are a professional, hobbyist, or just have images that you want to preserve and display, McKenna will help you. Visit their site at McKennaPro.com to see their products, pricing, and to learn more. And now to continue our journey today, let's jump into Adobe Bridge. This image was photographed at the recent Shutterfest 2019 conference. I had the privilege of teaching there. Uh, this is my fifth of sixth year of attending and my second year of teaching. And I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity to teach and share my knowledge at this conference. I wanted to make this video today because I shared this piece in our social media groups for the conference and it's getting quite a bit of response, which is uh, a wonderful thing to me because it means that people are connecting with my artwork and it gives me an opportunity to share not only the artwork, but the story behind it and the techniques and how it was created, hence our video today. This video, of course, is being made for my YouTube channel and to the YouTube audience that has subscribed to this channel, but I'm going to also be addressing the Shutterfest community that I'll be sharing this video with. I know those folks Folks will, will get the most traction immediately with it, and I'm excited to talk about some of those aspects that they'll understand because they were just at the conference. But if you're coming to my YouTube channel without being a part of the Shutterfest community, first off, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much. If you like the content here, please like this video and consider subscribing. Shutterfest community, please do the same thing as this is a new YouTube channel, and I need your support to continue going forward with this. So I want to address both audiences as we talk, and I welcome you to the channel and what we have to go over. So. Let's talk about the specifics. This floor that you see in the piece is a uh, common spot that is photographed at, at Union Station, which is in St. Louis. The conference is held there and everyone loves this floor. This floor is filled with hundreds of these little glass squares that have lights inside of them. And it's just a wonderful piece to, to an area to photograph in. Over the five years that I've been there, I have never photographed a single image in this space because most of the work that I do is composite based. So I just need an out of the way corner to set up all the lighting and then just a solid background that I can extract the person from. When I was assigned this room to teach in and I taught a hands-on photography class on how to photograph story and fantasy in this space. Of course, I knew that I had to go there and actually work in the space and connect to it to see how I flowed through it and then how I can communicate some of my knowledge to the students utilizing this space. When I see photos that are shot in here, I see photos where essentially people treat it as a almost like photojournalistic. They they see the space and they try to tell a story within it, but they try to sell, tell a story within it where the floor too often becomes the subject of the story, not the person in the picture. And I knew that I could not ignore the floor, but I wanted the floor to be a, an integral component to the story, but not be the whole reason why we're taking this picture there. So as you see in this final piece of artwork, the floor does consume half of our image, but I would argue that it is not the floor that we're looking at. It, it is certainly, again, an important part, but we're connecting with her, and that was the story that I wanted to tell in the goal. Um, the, the wonderful talent in this image is Haley S. Cosplay. She's a fantastic cosplayer and a model that I have had the privilege of working with in the past, and I look forward to working with her in the future. She is able to tell a story between a single millisecond of the flash going off. Flash goes off, she's telling one story with her expression and her body pose, and then she jumps into another immediately. And it is an incredible talent that she has. And so I knew that I needed to utilize that for teaching at Shutterfest, but also as an artist to have that opportunity to work with her. The hair and makeup design that is on, on her is been, has been done by Chevy Johnson, who is a brilliant body painter, and I love working with her every chance that I get. And when I saw this design on her, I knew that I started seeing story immediately and I knew I, I wanted to do something that had a connection to space. 
and to the cosmos. I love astrophotography. When I look at pictures from NASA or other astrophotographers, I just, I'm, I can, I mesmerize. I can stare at them for hours because there's this beauty and color and vastness. And I wanted to connect that. And I wanted the floor to essentially be our gateway, our yellow brick road, so to speak, that leads into that cosmos and telling that story and having Haley be connected to it. So the colors, the star pattern, the floor, everything, I wanted that to be an overall part of the design. I spoke about this in my classes. And I want to reiterate this to the Shutterfest community, and I also want to reiterate this to the YouTube community as well. And real quick disclaimer, I lost my voice at Shutterfest teaching. It's slowly coming back. I have a little ways to go on that, but hence why I sound like I'm cosplaying uh, Harvey Firestein right now. So when I taught in the class, I talked about how learning Photoshop techniques, photography techniques are certainly important, but the key element to creating artwork like this is to think about design and story. That's where you have to begin every single time. You have to take away the elements of the real world and let your imagination run and start adding it to it. I spoke about in the class about how I wanted to tell the story from an actor's perspective. An actor, before they walk on stage, they know where they are coming from. Before the lights come up and they begin speaking, they know where they came from. They know the story of their character and they know where they're going. Same thing here. I started trying to design this idea of who is she? Where does she come from? Where is she going to go after the end of these images? And of course, again, the design perspective, as I laid out the shot in my head, I didn't see the walls in the background and, and random bits of photography equipment and Shutterfest banners and so forth. All of that went away. I closed my eyes and when I reopened it, I connected with the space and I started seeing the vastness of space. I felt that cold. I felt the color. I felt the, the allure of looking at the, uh, the nebulas and the stars and the cosmos and how she would be a gateway to connect us all together. And that's what goes through my mind. And it may seem cheesy to some of you that are, are watching this video, but this is my process. This is how I create this story. And that's what I did there. So in today's video, we're going to go through the process of extracting her, uh, or I'm not extracting her, but uh, retouching her inside of Photoshop and showing you some of those techniques for dodging and burning and frequency separation, and then how I added the textures and so forth to complete this process. If you're new to the channel, first and foremost, welcome to it. Thank you for watching this video today. Please like and subscribe. I have two platforms of content. One is Photoshop 101, where I show you how to do things like dodging and burning, how to make an action to replicate that technique, and then we have more complex complex videos on how I do the composite artwork that I create. So welcome to the channel. Please check out that other content and let's get started uh, by taking this image into Photoshop. So here is Adobe Bridge. Here are the different elements that I have used to create this piece. These pieces are purchased stock from either a, a company called Deposit Photos, which no longer exists. They are now a part of the family with Adobe stock or purchased directly from Adobe stock. And then this texture was um, uh, was taken for free by an artist who created it, who delineated and specifically pointed out that this stock is free and that there is no uh, rights that need to be secured and no connections that need to be made to the artist. And I want to stress that right now. If you use stock from people, please take the time to actually purchase it and follow their rules. If they give it freely, but they ask to be tagged in it or whatever else, please do that. Please link back to them. It helps them grow as artists, and that's vitally important. And then here is our original image. So when I walked into the space, and again, as I, we shot several different images, I knew that I would take away all of this in the background. This wallpaper, that column, the, the signage from uh, Shutterfest, and so forth. I, all of that went away. And as I'm photographing with her and I'm giving her direction, much like a director would with an actor, I let all of that fade away in my mind. I saw the cosmos that I would place behind her. Let's talk about the photography very briefly. This is gelled lighting, which I'm absolutely in love with. I love doing and throwing in color to the entire patterns. There are two Godox speed lights on either side of her. I'm sorry, Canon speed lights that are either side of her using strip boxes, 12 to 55 strip boxes that are pointed down to her. They have an orange gel inside of them. And then in front of her is a Godox AD 600 BM strobe with a 47 inch Octabox. And inside of that has a bunch of blue and teal uh, gel wrapped around it. Now, yours truly flew to Shutterfest and totally forgot to bring two things. One, his business cards. And don't worry, 
I'm a professional. And number two, I totally forgot to bring my actual gels that wrap around the strobes and completely cover it. So we kind of had to MacGyver it a little bit with the gels that I had on hand. So it didn't completely cover the main light. So the blues are not as strong as I would have preferred, but that was okay because there was so much blue in the design that I was still getting that intimate connection. And in a way, this is a happy accident because I wanted the, the dichotomy of color of the orange and blue, they're, they're complements to each other. I wanted those to be in the design while I'm letting the blue of Chevy's design jump through instead of augmenting it with a lot of blue light, but we still give it a little hint of blue from the main strobe itself. The floor, again, here it is in all of its glory and so forth. I want to speak very briefly uh, to the Shutterfest community. When you're there in this space and photographing, there was a vision I saw in my head, and it's a it's a lesson that I've learned over and over again from Salvatore Sincata, who is the owner of Shutterfest and puts together this amazing conference every year. Sal always talks about leading lines and just drills it every single time. When I was designing this in my mind, I wanted the leading lines of the floor to lead straight out as much as uh, uh, with symmetry as much as possible, creating a chevron shape on the floor. And I was laying down and I was looking at it and I saw it and I was about to step backwards to get the actual framing of the floor that I wanted. But there were other people there on set shooting and I didn't want to be in their way. So I sacrificed my vision because I just simply did not want to step in their way and be in their frame. I regret that choice. I was trying to be polite and, and to the other photographers. They weren't being rude or demanding that I, you know, get out of my shot. No, we were all working very copacetically, but I was trying to be polite and I sacrificed my vision for it. So I want to offer this piece of advice. When you're at a conference, when you're photographing and you see a vision and you trust it, spend some time, look at every element, know how you're going to capture it, dial in the lights, take a couple test shots before you get into the actual space where you need to be. When you're ready to go, turn around to everybody and say, hey folks, I'm so sorry, could I have one minute? And then step back and get the pictures that you need. Do it quickly, be respectful, and then move along. If I would have done that, the floor would have been a little bit better aligned. Is it the end of the world? Of course it's not, but it would have just made me happier as an artist to, to get that. So I'm going to open this image into Adobe Camera, or I'm sorry, Adobe Camera Raw, Adobe Photoshop CC 2019 by double clicking it, not zooming in all the way, thank you. And we're gonna double click the file and take it into Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. Once we're inside of Adobe Camera Raw, I want to point out a couple of quick things. First and foremost, I'm working in 16-bit mode. If you don't know why that's important, please check out the Photoshop 101 videos where I talk about processing images inside of Adobe Camera Raw. Now, this image has already been adjusted inside of Camera Raw because, again, I have already worked on this and created the piece, but let me talk through very briefly what I chose to do. Uh, I increased the overall exposure to make everything a little bit brighter. I took the contrast down just a tad and the highlights because they were a little too strong on the orange kicker here on her right shoulder. I took out the shadows significantly. I tend to, as a photographer, I tend to light for the drama and the mood that I'm creating that presents issues every single time, and I'm aware of that, but I know how I can fix it inside of Photoshop. Again, if you want to understand some of that philosophy, check out the Photoshop 101 videos. And then uh, the white point, I reevaluated everything in the white point by increasing it just a smidge, and then I reevaluated everything with a new black point as well. Uh, Clarity just has a little touch of it, and then Vibrance has a, a small touch of it as well. And those are the only changes I made inside of Adobe Camera Raw. So I would open the image. Again, it's going to be open in 16-bit mode. And the first thing that I want to do is dodging and burning. Actually, let me bring my layers window into the screen. I use two monitors, which I do highly recommend if you have the opportunity to do it. I keep all of the flyout windows, all the properties windows, layers, everything on another screen. So I'm only looking at my image as I work. So let's jump into the step that I love to do, which is dodging and burning. So I'm going to hit my dodge and burn action. I use the curves adjustment method for dodging and burning. If you don't know how to create this action or what dodging and burning does, check out the Photoshop 101 videos. There's a video to show you how to create this action and explain every single step and then how I utilize it in the work that I create. So I'm going to start, which is where I prefer to always start with the burn uh, layer and the burning of the image. I'm going to hit B for brush. I'm going to take the flow of my brush down to 10%. I don't want this to be a very powerful step. I just want to start creating a three-dimensionality to the image and start sculpting her with dodging and burning. 
So the black and white adjustment layer at the top forces me to see the image in its true values of luminosity, which is white, black, and gray. And I'm ignoring the color, which helps me do the dodging and burning process. So I always start with the face. I work in zones so that I don't look at all, I don't jump all over the image. I start in the face, then I move to the body and anywhere else where we need to be. So I'm adding some shadow here on the sculpt around her nostrils just to help that stand out a little bit. As you do makeup design or anything else, highlight and shadow need to play together to create a 3D shape. That's exactly what I'm doing right now just by adding some of those shadows in there. I must point out though that because her face has been painted with makeup, I can go a little more heavy handed with the dodging and burning. If this was just a standard beauty image and I go too heavy handed with dodging and burning, it's going to look very, very illustrated, which if that's your vision, rad. But if it isn't, then just be careful how far you go. So again, I'm just hitting some of the areas where I'm trying to think about three dimensionality. I want her lips to come out of the, in, of the image. I want her nose. I want to see a little bit underneath her eyes and so forth. I'm gonna hit her eyebrow a little bit, just a tan and then the uh, uh, her eyelashes. I'm going to come down to her neck, which is below her jawline. Again, her jaw and her head is extended toward us, and I'm just going to paint in a little bit of shadow because it helps her head to feel like it's coming away from the image, and that's the key here in this design. I'm going to hit the natural shadows of her clavicle so that the clavicle will jump out. I will come back later in just a moment and add the corresponding highlight to just help separate that just a little bit more. And again, I do apologize. My voice is uh, is apparently a very delicate flower that with all of my theater training, I haven't quite learned how to talk from my diaphragm still. So I talk with my throat and then that uh, caused me to have some issues at Shutterfest. There was a wonderful gentleman, I'm so sorry I forgot his name, that uh, at our Game of Thrones after hour shoot brought me a bag of Ricola and I love Ricola and uh, that saved me that night. So sir, if you're watching this, Thank you so very much because uh, I was able to get through the rest of that shoot with some squeaking of a voice because of your Ricola. I, I desperately uh, thank you for that. So now I'm coming to the art or the, the body paint design itself, and I just want to augment it just a little bit with dodging. I use dodging and burning as an illustrative technique to create that three dimensional shape to sculpt, but also to augment the costumes or the body paint or whatever I happen to be working with. So in this case, I'm just increasing the overall darkness of the body paint um, in the design. I did the same thing in the hair. When I add these shadows in the sculpt of her hair, it's really helping all those layers to pop out. And that's one of the powerful key uh, aspects of dodging and burning is that you can enhance this overall design in hair and start seeing that 3D shape come to life. Okay, and then I'm going to, let's, let's get out of the way right now. We're gonna have a TV timeout. She is incredibly beautiful, and we're going to be zooming in and seeing certain parts of her anatomy. I don't have a problem with that. Hopefully, you don't either. Uh, TV timeout, done. So now I'm going to enhance the overall darkness between her, her breasts so that they pop out just a little bit more uh, from the design, and then uh, which will also help separate that a little bit from the background. I'm going to hit these areas again just one more time coming down her forearm and then where her hand connects to the floor. I want to also do the same thing. I want to add some shadow underneath it because again it just helps play up that three-dimensional nature to the image and uh, makes it all just a little bit more believable uh, of the design. Right underneath her foot, same thing. Okay. And then uh, again, I, if, you know, if I was being very meticulous, I would go through and just make sure there's tiny little bits and pieces of shadow that I can add. But 98.9% .9 of the shadows that I would add is already done. So this is the step that I would take uh, in the burning process of dodging and burning. Now I want to go back to dodging and I want to do the same thing and remember the areas that I hit because I need to add those corresponding highlights to create the three dimensional effect. So I'm going to paint some white onto her nose to start bringing that out uh, on her lip because I want her lip to pop out a little bit more. This naturally brighter area on the top of her lip, we're going to paint in some more, hit her cheeks uh, right underneath her eyes just a smidge to help that stand out. And again, I want to reiterate, her face is painted. So if this was a beauty image and I was adding this much white, it's going to be a very stylized dodging and burning. So just be careful how far you go because um, we have the body painting, um, the illustrated effect is, is certainly appropriate for this. Again, her jawline, we added that shadow underneath on her neck. Now on her actual jawline, I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of dodging 
so that it further corresponds to that highlight and shadow to separate and give three dimensionality to the image. Her uh, clavicle, let's hit that one and again bring in that highlight. I'm going to bring in a little bit of a highlight as we move down her chest. And then of course right on top of her chest we're going to paint in some of those highlights because again there's some sensuality in this uh this image it's it has a bit of allure that's a part of it so let's go ahead and accentuate that but you know let's let's not try to make a super strong two double time hotspot so that we're not pulling focus we don't want to pull focus to her chest we want everybody to see her and see the sensualness of the image and not pull too much focus okay and then again in the overall body paint design we don't see um in this view with the black and white layer we don't see as strong of the highlights that are there i am artistically choosing to add them in this painting design and i have a relationship with chevy where i know that i'm not i'm not really changing her design i'm just making it stand out some more and we've worked together in the past that i know she would trust me that i'm not going to go too far to alter the design i just want to augment it a little bit and that's absolutely key when you work a uh, work with uh, body painters hair and makeup artists the talents themselves do not alter them beyond the expectations of what they know you can do that it's expected within the image don't alter it too much without their permission. Keep them collaborative with you as you work and uh, you'll be able to make some great relationships and great artwork as well. So again, we added those shadows into the hair. Now I'm going to add the dodging highlights to make it pop out and stand out. Again, this is a very stylized design, so I'm going pretty heavy handed with this, which is okay. I don't mind because I want all that to come into play. And let's push that through just a smidge more into these areas. I'm going to hit this top area here on her forehead because we have the body paints design here, the reflective paints, but we also have this dark, uh, darkness area of dodge, or I'm sorry, of burning because it's, it's her hairline. So we're creating that 3D feel. I'm helping this shadow by giving it a highlight reverse down at the bottom. So we really see that 3D effect right here above her eye. We're going to hit some of that. And Haley's wearing some fantastic contacts that I do believe come from Sam Hain contacts. A link uh, will be in the description below to their contacts. Uh, if you are a, a model or a cosplayer and you happen to be watching this, I'm sure Haley would back me up on this. You, you need to get really good contacts. Do not use cheap contacts. Cheap contacts will stick to your retina. I'm not kidding. And when you pull them out, I've heard so many horror stories of cosplayers. They wear them for eight hours. They take them out and it literally rips their retina. So get good contacts. Trust Sam Ham contacts. The link's in the description below. Okay, I'm just hitting again some of the corresponding highlights of Chevy's design through here. Okay, and on her hand and on her arm. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, again, I, I, you know, if I was being meticulous, I would go through, but we're in about 98.9% complete with a dodge element. Now I want to come to this final step, which is uh, a highlights step. This is essentially a curves adjustment layer that's blown way out. And I use it very selectively and very carefully to add some key uh, specular highlights into the image. And again, if you don't know what this is, check out the Photoshop 101 videos. I show you how this process comes into play and how to make the action itself. So again, I want to be very careful where I add this. I'm still painting with an opacity of 100% and a flow of 10% on my black mask to start revealing it. And I'm just selecting certain key areas where I want these strong specular highlights to come into play. And I'm trying to mimic the overall flow of her hair. I don't want some bizarre straight line when we have curvy wavy hair. It may seem like common sense, but I see a lot of retouching where people go against the flow of the design. They go against the flow of the imagery and then they wonder why it looks bizarre and you just need to go with the flow. I feel like this is some kind of motivational speech. Go with the flow of your own design. All right, cool. The one nice thing about having your voice uh, gone is that it's very deep and gravelly. So I feel like a little bit of like Barry White. I, I don't sound like Barry White at all, but I kind of feel like Barry White. Um, let's just not go any further with that. All right, cool. Right here in our clavicle, I'm going to hit just again, one or two specular highlights. And this may be too much. I may not like this. Right now, my goal again is a is an efficiency of workflow. I'm just looking everywhere where I can add some of these specular highlights to the highlights and shadows to draw it out. Notice that I'm not adding a line and then zooming all the way back out and going, mm, let's think about it and ponder. No, I'm trying to get all the work done, then zoom out and then take it all in with my eyes and then decide how I want to proceed forward. 
Okay, I don't really think we need to hit her chest with a strong highlight. I do want to kind of hit this pattern right through here though, because this arm is closer to us in the foreground. We're connecting with it as focus. So let's go ahead and play it up just a little bit and hit some of those areas down her hand. Cool, because I know uh, that her hand may tend to get a little lost when we start adding some of these effects. So I let's, let's go ahead and hit it so that we're helping the viewer make those connections. Okay, right, maybe through here. And again, I'm just going with the flow of her, her shoulder positions. I'm just painting those white lines and trying to bring that in. Okay, that all looks pretty good. So I want to review it now. So I'm going to hit Control and Zero. I'm on a PC. If you're on a Macintosh, I think you hit the option, open Apple option, upside down Q, Control key. Is there a Control key? On, I don't know. So we've got the highlights into it. And now I'm looking. I love the overall flow of this. Look at the hair. Look at how that hair is really popping out because of the dodging and burning process that we've done. So now let's turn off the black and white layer so that we can now see everything in the color design. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I, again, this is very heavy handed dodging and burning, but that's okay because this is a, this is a fantasy uh, gelled composite or a piece of artwork. So, so it's okay to go in that realm, but let's do a before and after. Let's zoom in and just focus on her face. And what I want you to do is right now you're seeing the dodging and burning. You're seeing the quote unquote after focus on the three dimensionality as we bounce back and forth in this. Look at the hair design, these lines through here in her face, her nose with all this, here it is gone. How flat it becomes without dodging and burning with it without I stressed in my special effects class that I taught at Shutterfest that this is a simple process dodging and burning is one of the most foundational elements to Photoshop and to photography people will say how do, how do you do this like you must have tons of third-party programs and all this kind of stuff. nope dodging and burning one of the classic steps in Photoshop, which is why I consistently, truthfully tell people, you can do this. You can create this artwork. If you have the design and the vision in your mind, you can create it. And don't tell me you can't because dodging and burning is, is a basic core element of Photoshop. So trust your vision, trust your design, learn dodging and burning by subscribing to my channel and watching the Photoshop 101 videos. Okay, so dodging and burning is done. I was right. I really don't like this one strong highlight on her clavicle. So I'm hitting B for brush. I'm hitting the letter X by using my Wacom Intuos pen. Uh, this little button has been associated to the letter X so I can seamlessly bounce back and forth with my foreground color and switch back and forth. It just saves me a little time as I'm retouching. I'm going to paint black on this mask to make that uh, strong highlight go away. And I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to hit Control and Zero to come all the way back out. And just assess it one more time. The dodging and burning step looks good. Okay, let's move on to some more design. So the next step in design is I want to augment some of the color that I see in this piece. Uh, again, I, I don't know what Chevy used. If she used hairspray, paint, the blood of a bunch of Smurfs, I don't know. But I want to augment it just a little bit. Again, because my vision is this cosmos and that colorful beauty of space. And I want this to really, really pop. So the easiest way to do this is to just add a hue saturation adjustment layer to the top of everything and then just uh, carefully put it into the process. So I'm going to come down to the adjustment window here in the bottom of our layer window and come up to hue saturation and adjustment layer. It's putting it into the group of dodging and burning. That's okay. Uh, I'm just going to drag it to the top real quick and then let me bring the properties window into our main screen. So here is our hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm going to just increase the saturation and punch it up. Now I don't want it to be this saturation saturated everywhere. Let's zoom back out so we can see. Certainly if you like this, that's great. If you're doing something similar, please by all means trust your instincts, go with it. That's totally fine. This is a little too much for me. I just want to insert in careful areas, mainly Chevy's design. So I'm going to take this mask and take it to a high doll mask or a black mask by inverting it, by hitting control and I on a Macintosh, hit all the keys on the bottom left side of your keyboard and one of them will be control and it'll do it for you. Don't hit all the keys on the bottom of your keyboard. I'm going to hit B for brush and then I'm going to paint white on this black mask. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit 
and then I'm going to paint white uh, in the areas where I want the design to be or the enhancement of saturation to be. I'm going to hit shift and zero to increase the flow of my brush to 100% and then just paint white and start bringing in all of the blood of Smurf Village into her hair. Those poor Smurfs. Gargamel finally won. That evil, evil man. So his hair, or, I'm sorry, her hair is uh, now has the colors enhanced quite a bit. And then uh, I'm going to hit the overall body paint design, but I'm going to go carefully. I don't want to just make a big brush and paint everywhere in her face. I just want it to be careful in certain areas. Again, with the same kind of control of design that I was doing with dodging and burning. I'm going to hit some of these stronger areas following flow. Hit her lips, nose right in through there down on the design of her neck because it's standing that's getting a little lost because of just her body position and then of course this line that's uh lovingly coming down her arms and look at the saturation process and how it really brought out that pink and that design but that was also augmented by the dodging and burning had we not dodged this area it would not be as vibrant and that's one of the key aspects of dodging and burning it isn't just sculpting it's augmenting artwork and color and design. So these elements, foundational elements, work hand in hand in Photoshop to create and augment artistry. And that's why I, I consistently tell people this is work you can do if you have the vision and the desire to continue learning. Okay, so I think we're pretty good through there. All right, so that one step of the hue and saturation adjustment looks really good. Uh, I'm going to bring it back into our little group here so we can do another nice before and after. Before very flat, both in three-dimensional nature and color. And now after, we're really getting that sculpt. We're getting that flow of the cosmos coming up her arms, which is really key. So that looks pretty good. The next thing that I want to do, and this is for all my friends in Shutterfest watching this video, and again, the YouTube community, I want to make this floor pop, and I want it to jump up, and I want it to be big, and I want those lights to be big. And there's a bazillion ways to do it. But the easiest way to do it is to duplicate the layer by hitting Control and J on a Macintosh. I think it's, I think it's Command. It's Command, Command and Control. They start with C. Yes, Command. It's Command J. I just learned a Mac hockey. Look at me. Mm. So I've duplicated the layer by hitting Control and J. I'm going to come up to the layer blending mode and change it to screen. Nope, it's much brighter. That looks kind of cool, but that's not what I want. I want the color to be enhanced. So I'm looking at the blending modes that enhance overall luminosity. Well, there happens to be one right below it that emulates the same process we just did in dodging and burning, but with its namesake, Color Dodge. And when I hit that, now the floor is immediately illuminated, both in luminosity and in color. I didn't have to paint every single square. I didn't have to do a whole bunch of different blending techniques and everything else. I just duplicated the layer, changed the blending mode to Color Dodge, and the floor looks amazing. Of course, she looks a little too too bizarre for my tastes. If you like it, that's awesome. Go find Haley and photograph her at, at Union Station. I don't like this. So I need to mask it out on her. I don't want it to be there. So I'm going to come down and make a, a reveal all mask, which is showing the entire thing that I just did of this adjustment uh, by duplicating the layer and so forth. All I want to do now is paint it away off of Haley. So on the white mask, I'm going to switch to black. I'm painting at a flow of 100%, and I'm just going to paint and take it away from her a little bit. Down her body, down her arms, because again, it increased the overall luminosity of the image as well as the color. And I, I don't want that to be too prevalent on her. I just want it to be on the floor. And uh, some of you may be asking, well, why don't you just do a black mask where the entire effect is gone and then just paint it on the floor? You can do that too. No problem at all. Uh, I just choose to, I feel like Haley is left surface area to paint than the floor itself. So I'm choosing to just paint her out. And I don't have to be very precise in this process because if a little bit of that color, like right through here, let's zoom in just a little bit so we can see it. If a little bit of this effect uh, let's paint it back in. If that bounces up, that's fine because the specular highlights of the floor would bounce up on top of her if the light source of the floor was stronger than what it is. So if if we bleed over a little bit into that, no problem. That's not the end of the world. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and leave just a smidge of it on the edges uh, so that we can show that. We'll hit some of these hot spots back in here where we see some of the specular highlights just to show you uh, how it doesn't detract too much. I just don't want it to be too powerful. Okay. 
that all looks pretty good. And again, quick little tip inside of Photoshop, if you want to see where you've actually painted so you can see the effects and make sure you didn't miss anything, the easiest way to do that is hold down the Alt key on a Macintosh. It's the option, Apple, Command, Open Apple, whatever key. So hold Alt and click the layer mask itself. And now we can see <laughs> this mask that looks like some kind of, uh, like I need to go find a therapist because this looks creepy. So this shows us where we've painted. So we can see what we have done. And if there's any you know areas, of course you can start to see kind of the shape of her, but this will help you see areas that you might've missed, like right through here, I, that's on her face somewhere. So I'm gonna hit Alt again to go back and and then just make sure that I hit that a little bit with uh, painting black to get rid of that one little line there in case it doesn't need to be there. Okay, so we've augmented the floor by duplicating the layer, changing the blending mode to color dodge, and then we just painted it away where we didn't want it to be, and that gave us our floor. The next step that we need to go through is a little bit of composite work. And essentially what I wanna do now is prepare all of this background through here to start adding textures to it. So there's a process when you add a texture to an image, you drop it into the image and you change the blending mode most commonly to the layer blending mode, most commonly to overlay or soft light. The way that that works well in the image is to have a darker background. It shows up more in that process. We can change it to multiply, to screen. The blending modes are, I, I say often, are the most powerful tool inside of Photoshop, so please experiment with those. So that I, right now, I know that I need to make this area darker. Now I could go through the process of using the quick selection tool, which is the tool I most often use when I'm doing composite work. If you don't know what that tool is and how to utilize it, check out the Photoshop videos in the channel. But I don't don't want to go through that process because I know that this is kind of a general blend. We want her coming out of those textures from our original design. So I don't know need to go through the painful process of selecting her and selecting her hair and so forth. I can just blend layers together. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this image. I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Control and J on a Mac. It's Command and J. And then I'm going to come into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, which I love using Adobe Camera Raw as a filter itself. So to do that, I'm going to hit Control, Shift, and A on a Macintosh. Command, Shift, and A if there's a Shift key. If not, then go on a quest to find the Shift key and then hit it and you'll go into Adobe Camera Raw. It'll be an amazing adventure. So inside of Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to take the exposure down. I'm going to take the highlights down. I'm going to take the white point down and I'm going to increase the black point uh, by taking that slider down. I'm going to increase the overall shadows because I'm just trying to darken all of this. And the reason why I don't want to just paint black on it, right? I could do that. I can make a new blank layer above it and paint a bunch of black and then we could throw our textures on top of it. I don't want to do that because I want there to be a gradual effect of the floor coming out of the design. So right now, from a design perspective, I'm thinking about how to draw focus to her. I'm doing it with a vignette. The floor down here in the base is darker. I want that in this next step. I want the floor in the uh, background to slowly come into the overall design. And of course, we're getting rid of everything else in the back. And we are actually going to paint some black here in just a moment. So once I've taken down all the luminosity, I'm going to hit OK and bring it into Photoshop. And now we've adjusted it. Now let's go ahead and add a mask to it and paint it in where we want it to be. Do we do a hide all mask or a reveal all mask? Well, in this case, I want to leave the hide or the reveal all mask, which is the white mask. So the effect is there and just paint it away where I don't need it. So I'm going to hit B for brush. I'm going to paint black on this and I'm going to first start at a flow of 100% in the major areas and be careful. I'm going to hit her head, her chest and, and center and torso little bit on her knees. Notice I'm not trying to go to the edge of her because this is important to try to stay inside the lines. And I could of course help myself out by making a selection around her if I chose to, and that would make this painting process a little bit easier. But by the time I make an appropriate perfect selection, I can just hand paint and go. So I'm painting and connecting through here. Okay, and then right up into the center of her hair just a smidge. But again, trying to stay away from those edges. Now down in this core area, I'm painting it in. There we go. Out to the edges, just a smidge. And now let's talk about this. Right now, from this simple step, our eyes have no choice but to go to her and focus on her. And that's the key. I'm drawing your focus as a viewer. In the design, I'm drawing your focus to her. 
So when there's all these other bells and whistles, people aren't going, oh my gosh, the floor is amazing. Oh my gosh, look at the, the cool cosmos behind her. They're looking at her and she will become a part, the background will become a part of her. The floor will become a part of her and she'll become a part of it. And that's the unity that I was trying to do. And this is, I'm telling you, as I was standing there photographing, this is what I saw in my head. Because I knew the steps I could take inside of Photoshop, but I paid attention to design. And this is what I saw in my head. And I'm bringing it to life inside of Photoshop. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to change the flow of my brush to 10% by hitting Shift and the number 1. And now I want to go through and start feathering out the mask itself around those edges, being very careful. Because again, I have to paint out that column here in just a minute and uh, the Shutterfest signs and so forth. So just being careful to feather the effect around the edges. I'm painting at 10% flow. I'm using a Wacom Interos Pro tablet. If you do not use a tablet, I highly, highly recommend that you take the time to, I know it's got a learning curve, but get yourself a tablet. It will change your life because of pressure sensitivity. The lighter that I touch this pen to the tablet, the lighter the tool is interacting with Photoshop. And it gives me a, a great control and finesse to the image. Uh, and into the artwork that I'm doing. And then right through here, I just want to now, I made my brush a little bit bigger, I'm just doing a general feathering on the edges <clears throat> to paint this in a little bit and bring in that design and that focus. Okay, right through there. And I think we're pretty good. So I'm gonna hit Control and Zero to come all the way back out. We have focus now. We're pushing the audience to her, which is key. Now I want to make a new blank layer above this because I want to, I need to get rid of some of these elements. They don't, it doesn't have to be pure black in the background for these textures that we're going to bring in to work. That's fine. It would work right now, but we would start seeing some telltale elements of the background itself. So I'm doing it in the most simple way possible. I'm making a new blank layer, hitting B for brush. I'm going to paint black at a flow of 10% because I want to be careful where I put this and I don't want to go into Haley and I'm just painting away these elements. Again, I know that I'm going to throw some busy textures into this. So if some of the actual <laughs> tiling or the, the, the floor or whatever else shows up, that's quite all right. I'm just painting a little bit of black to make sure that we don't have too many recognizable elements uh, pop up into this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because we can see some of the column right now, right behind her head. So very carefully painting in some of that black right through there okay and in this zoomed in mode we can still see the hex pattern of the Shutterfest uh, uh, poster so let's go ahead and get rid of that just a smidge okay apparently my printer wants to play along because it's warming itself up right now I have no idea why maybe the printer is so excited for this artwork that it wants to print it for me I don't think so Hewlett Packard piece of crap all right cool here we go Okay, we've gotten rid of some of the different elements. I think that all looks good. So again, if there's little bits and pieces of elements that come through, that's totally fine. Uh, it's not, not the end of the world. So now let's do the fun part and bring in these textures and start creating this design. So let's go back to Adobe Bridge and we're going to open up all of our textures. I'm control clicking all of them and then I'm going to right click and say open, which will open them as their own separate documents and hit V and bring this first texture into the mix and drop it on top of everything in the layer stack. Now let's resize it so that it fits the entire document frame. I'm holding Alt, which will resize all of the bounding boxes at once. Uh, if you, I'm gonna hit Enter real quick to accept the changes. When you're on the Move tool, just make sure this area, Show Transform Controls, is checked so you can see all the bounding boxes to resize it. And then I'm going to grab this corner and just bring it back down. And uh, as long as it extends, roughly past the entire document window. I know the texture is everywhere on it and I'm totally fine with it. I hit enter to accept those transform controls. And now let's change the blending mode and start with the most popular, which is overlay and soft light. We don't see it. We see it on the ground and I, I, I purposely went to this because I want to show you most people go to overlay and soft light immediately. It's making everything darker. It's not playing against that black in the background, but it gave the floor a really cool texture and the color pattern as well in this design 
in this texture is also playing off the floor. So if you're working on something like this and you can say, wow, I really like that effect and that vignetting effect and strong focus, then take the time to do, you know, duplicate the layer, change it to soft light, blend it in and just mask it out where you don't need it. But in this case, uh, the vignette that I did earlier is good enough for me. So I don't necessarily need that aspect. I just want it to show up a little bit on the background. So I'm going to explore the other blending modes. And the reason why I'm taking you through these steps right now in this YouTube video is because this is how how I taught myself over the years. I explored every option. I wanted to know what every button did inside of Photoshop, and I just kept pushing and learning to teach myself those aspects. Multiply is way too dark. I'm just arrowing down through the different blending modes. Lighten. That's why we painted it black. Lighten. We're using the texture itself to lighten the background. So I knew it would play off of it by giving it a neutral black background and then let the texture come through. Screen increases that luminosity and, and that may be uh, necessary in this. We'll just have to see how we, how we feel about it as we add the other textures. For right now, I'm gonna go back to lighten because I, again, want that vastness of space and that cosmos. So I'm seeing the texture come through, but I'm seeing the darker tones in this design pink through as well. And again, the design, the, the texture I use is not a happy accident. What do we see in these colors? We see blues and purples and reds and magentas and so forth, and a little bit of this hint of crackly star texture. Well, what is the, uh, where's my piece? There it is. What are the colors that we're using in this? It's, we're using purples, magentas, blues, all that kind of stuff. So there's a harmony there and there's a symmetry, and that's why I chose that texture. Now I want to come to the next piece, which is this beautiful piece, uh, from Dollar Photo Club. Again, they don't exist. And, uh, it's this nebula gas painting cloud, which is really pretty. So I'm going to bring it in. Uh, I'm hitting V for the move tool, holding down shift and dragging it over to my document, which activates this tab and activates the document. And the reason why I held down shift is now when I drop my mouse and let go of the mouse button, no matter where the mouse cursor is at, it's going to drop the texture in the precise center of my document. It just saves me a little bit of time so I don't have to go find it and drag it down and resize and whatever else. I'm going to hold down alt uh, again on a PC, on a Macintosh. I have no idea what the alt key is, uh, but it'll be on the screen because I don't have time to think of it. So I'm I'm going to hold down alt and grab this corner and drag it up so that the nebula field fills the entire document itself hit enter to accept the transform then i'm going to come out to the blending modes and try the same thing let's go to lighten i'm digging that because now the background both when we painted black to get rid of the actual uh areas of the walls of, of the light up floor in union station then we put that texture and did lighten. Now we're doing lighten with the nebula field and it's interacting it and letting those stars come through. How cool is that? And I mean, and you may like this conceptually and say, Hey, that's perfect. Leave it the way it is. I mean, look at this little nebula flare. Let's zoom in just a smidge hitting Z for the uh, zoom tool. This is like, it's really neat the way it's interacting with her. And, and we could work with this even more and try to select some of that nebula field and weave it into her hair. And I'm pointing out all of the options, all of the design, all of the opportunity because we took one textured layer, threw it on top and changed the blending mode to lighten. Blending modes in Photoshop are some of the basic foundational stuff inside of Photoshop. This is the power of what that can do. You find a cool piece of texture, you appropriately secure a license for it, you drop it into your image, and all of a sudden it takes off in design. And that's why I love stressing this point. Blending modes are a very powerful tool inside of Photoshop. In this case, for our design, I wanted uh, Haley to really come through it, so I wanted to essentially remove some of that. So I put a reveal all mask or a white mask, hit B for brush, and then I'm gonna start painting just a little bit of white, I'm sorry, black, onto this to start fading her, fading that effect out and letting it come through. Again, soft brush, flow of 10%, just gently painting this through, letting her come through and appear. And I have to be honest with you, I'm telling you right now, this didn't happen last night when I created this piece, but I'm start, I really dig that overall nebula flow. Uh, that we see. So I may have to revisit this piece a little bit later uh, to to paint, work with that and see how I can blend that into the design. So thank you, Shutterface community and YouTube. You've now added more work to my already overloaded slate. Awesome. All right. So now let's come to the original texture that we put on top of this. I'm going to put a white mask on top of it. Again, a reveal all. And I just want to paint it away from where Haley is at. I'm being careful to not try to go too far outside of the design 
uh, I'm outside the lines of her, but I just want to take it away just a little bit so that we see her a smidge more. There we go. Hitting that nebula again because there's that weird little thing like there. It looked like a plastic cup behind her. It was a little bizarre. And this nebula uh, texture is here. It's at the nebula field right through here just a smidge. Okay, cool. All right, so, and again, for the purposes of the video, I'm trying to be a little bit fast here, but I want to point out an issue that we've created. This part of her head blends pretty decently with this texture because this side of the texture, this side of the stock image is darker. Of course, we have this strong highlight here, but we don't have a strong of a highlight on her. So we just need to blend it. We don't need to make a precise cutout. We just need to blend it. Well, we could do it one of two ways. We can add a overall luminance adjustment to make Haley brighter, or we can make the background a little bit darker. And that's all I want to do in this case. So I'm clicking the actual layer of the, the nebula field itself. I'm going to hit B for brush, and I'm actually going to paint black at a flow of 10% very gently right through this area. I don't want to cover up entirely the texture we see there. I'm just trying to take the luminosity down just a smidge so that it more evenly blends to her. And as I paint black, more of it starts disappearing, the nebula field. More of it starts disappearing, which is naturally letting her hair come through that element, and that's okay with me. I'm going to come to the other texture and just paint some black to make sure that it isn't too vibrant there. And then just a few more touches through here because I want that feathering of luminosity, that feathering of color to bleed out from her into the background itself and not have it be too great of a distraction. I'm going to come back to the nebula mask itself and now I'm going to paint white which will start revealing it again and just I want to come back into this area now and try to seamlessly integrate it into her and just feather it. Because we made the layer darker by painting directly on top of it with the color black we are now able to bring some of it back in and feather it in without it being too strong of a distraction. Okay bringing some of that back into those areas there itself that looks pretty good. I'm going to get rid of this part of the nebula. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm not digging that one little highlight here. This little part of the nebula right here from an overall perspective is a hot spot that our eyes have to get past. That's a potential distraction. From a design perspective, I don't need distractions. I need the eyes to go to her and then, you know, revisit the rest of the piece uh, with our eyes and see what's there. So I'm just painting some black onto the, uh, well, onto the actual layer to make it go away. Or I could paint black on the mask and start taking it away. And uh, again, I'm just looking for some of those elements that might be too hot with luminosity that would dry focus and pull it away. Okay, that's a good blend, I think, overall. That looks pretty good. Let's take our last texture, which is this wonderful fractal from Adobe stock, and bring it into our image. Again, I'm on the Move tool, holding down Shift. I'm going to drag it into the document, let go. It drops it into the center. I'm going to rotate it so that it will fit the overall document and just increase the overall size. Hitting enter again. I chose these colors on purpose because these colors are the harmony that we see in the painting by Chevy. And then I'm going to now change to lighten. And now we have that full swirling cool effect that you see in the piece. Let's go to screen. It makes it even brighter. I'm not digging screen. It's too bright. And we're not getting that deep dark cosmos. Let's explore a few others just really quickly. I'm arrowing up. Dark color doesn't work. Doesn't make sense. Linear burn doesn't work. Color burn doesn't work. Multiply way too dark. Let's go down to overlay and soft light. Here's overlay. That's actually kind of neat. It gives us that nebula feel and it's really neat, but it's taking it in a different direction than I initially went in. Soft light just, you know, softens the overall effect of overlay by doing soft light. And again, we're getting that cosmos feel and you may like this and it may resonate with you. That wasn't what I chose to do. So I'm coming back up to uh, lighten, which I like where it's at. Again, I want some of those highlights to be in there, but I need to take it down just a smidge. It's too bright in certain areas. So I'm just going to lower the opacity of the layer itself just a smidge. And now it's starting to seamlessly blend into that background and we're getting some of the texture of the fractal. We're getting the texture of the nebula field and we're getting the texture of our original piece of stock that we started with to begin with. Same concept, putting a reveal all mask, a white mask on this layer and then hitting B for brush, painting with black flow of 10% on the layer mask itself, and I'm just painting it away from certain areas off of Haley, so that our eyes are focusing on her and driving to her. 
Again, I like the I like where we see it down here in the floor. That's fine. Over here, that's cool. The cosmos is coming from behind. The floor is our yellow brick row that leads us to it. It's all pretty good right through there. And then just touching it a few spots and some other areas just to make sure general feather to make sure that it's all feathered in and believable right to here to her arms as well. OK, so we've added three different textures with the blending modes. Again, most powerful part of Photoshop, in my opinion, is the layer blending modes. We changed the blending modes all to lighten. So they're interacting with that dark background. We have this blank layer here where we actually painted some black into the original design of Union Station to get rid of that area. To help us with that, we duplicated the layer, brought down all the exposure, the highlights, reset it with white and black points and shadows to make everything in the background darker because we wanted that floor to be present in the background and feather into the design, both from the foreground and the background itself. All of these elements, let's go ahead and put them into a group. I'm selecting all of them, hitting Control and G, Command G on a Mac, and now we have them in a group. Here is where we were with all of our design, dodging and burning, Human saturation adjustments, frequency separation, all that good stuff. There's the background of Shutterfest, Union Station, and now our design. And I want to open up this group. It was these five layers that created that design before and after. And I want to stress this again. I know this video is long and I'm sorry, but I want to stress this again. These are fundamental basics in Photoshop, layer blending modes. Finding the textures, get a, get a subscription with Adobe stock, find the stock images. Where does it all begin? When I walked into that floor, I saw this world. I forced myself to get rid of all that wall in the background and I saw this world. When I walked in there, it looked like this to me. I closed my eyes, I took a deep breath, and I let this be my guide as I photographed this story with Haley. The final steps that I want to go through are some beginning uh, artistic enhancements that you can do to the overall design to essentially put your touch as an artist on top of it. First and foremost, my favorite thing to do in my process is to add a curves adjustment layer on top of everything. It's going to put it in our little group. That's totally fine. And then what I do is take this anchor point, which is in the shadows area, and I bring it straight up, which gives it a matte effect. It starts to leach away the black point and the image and gives it that matte effect, which I actually kind of like, but it's, it's too uh, heavy handed. So I make an anchor point right in the center of this curves line and bring it back to the middle. So we start to get some of that contrast into there uh, from this step that we've taken. The next thing that I tend to do is to add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer on top of everything, because again, I'm trying to add contrast to the overall effect. So I want to, here's my properties window. I'm just going to simply increase the overall contrast to the overall uh, design. Now, when you do this, because this adjustment layer is affecting everything in the, your image, luminosity and color. So what I want it to do is I want to make sure, are you is, is this adjustment layer increasing the color too much? If it is, you can change the blending mode of the adjustment layer itself to luminosity. So it's forced to only deal with the light data in the image, not the color. If you like what it did with the color, that's fine. You can leave it as normal and it just enhances and punches the color a little bit. In this case, this is a very colorful image. I don't mind what it did with the color, but I wanted to show again, layer blending modes for adjustment layers are powerful and how they interact with your overall design. The next thing that I would do is I would infuse color, even though there's already so much, I would infuse color to it. And I want to do complementary colors to the overall uh, pattern that we see. So to do that, I'm going to make a solid color adjustment layer. I'm going to go ahead and choose a purple. And I'm going to go somewhere in this middle tone. And, and I don't look at color purely as, well, the, it's this version of purple. I look at it from a luminosity perspective. This is a bright purple. This is a dark purple. This is a mid-tones purple. So I'm choosing that mid-tone of color and the and of purple. And now I need to find a blending mode that infuses it to the design. The easiest way to do that is to go back to the ones we just used, which was lighten. So now it's lightening everything. Those dark tones, which is why we painted black in the background to begin with. Now it's starting to lightening all of it. it that's a cool design, right? That's fine. If you want to keep it that way, that's great. I don't. So I want to bring down the fill of it, not opacity, fill. So I'm just like opacity of our brush and fill of flow, fill is kind of the same thing. It allows it to be feathered into the effect. So I'm in decreasing the fill down to like 17%. And it's unifying all of the elements now. 
And that's one of the key things I talk about in my composite videos in the YouTube channel. So check those out, like, and subscribe. I try to add things on top of every element in the image that unifies it. So all those textures we put into the background, the floor, her, when we added the solid color adjustment layer, it begins to unify all the elements together. And that's absolutely key. So now we added that color into it and we're unifying those backgrounds. Now let's add the other color that we see in the overall design. We see purples and blues and reds, right? Well, we added purple and that color family. What's the other color we see? Orange. So let's add a solid color adjustment layer. Let's come to orange. I say orange instead of orange because it's this i'm cool um so i'm trying to force myself to start saying orange instead of orange all right so i'm going to add it to a soft light because now i'm trying to infuse it into the elements of this and see how i can bring it through in that luminosity i'm making that luminosity of the floor pop up if i went back to lighten let's take a look at it and see lighten is lightening the dark areas I could go to multiply because I want to, you know, I want to have it interact with the floor. Multiply looks really cool, but it's darkening it. I know that soft light, soft, it's soft and it's blending it, but it's adding light to it in that blending mode and enhancing that overall floor. But of course it did it to the entire thing. I don't want that. So I'm going to change the fill and bring it down just a smidge. Let's go down to about 20%. Yeah, let's go up just a smidge more. 30%. Now we're starting to get that resonance of that color everywhere. It's blending and playing nice with the purples and the blues and infusing itself in the soft light aspect of everything there. If it's too much in certain areas, I can just utilize the layer mask and paint it away. I could just invert the mask by hitting Control and I or Command and I on a Macintosh, hit B for brush and paint white, and I could just paint it here. I'm gonna change my flow to 100%, and I could just paint it here on the floor to make this rich and warm. Yeah, I kind of actually like that, that's better. Because I want that two-tone, I want that blue softness of space, and then the hot floor and the orange floor uh, leading into it and through this design. And then the last thing that I tend to do is I tend to add a vignette to everything because again, I'm trying to drive your focus to the subject of this piece. So I'm going to make a solid color adjustment layer, I'm going to keep it at black, then I'm going to change the blending mode of this layer to soft light because again, I want it to be luminescent in the image. I want the lights to come through. I want it to be soft and not heavy handed. And then all I have to do is use this layer mask and start painting away where I don't want it to be. I'm going to change my brush, uh, my foreground color to black. I'm going to change my brushes flow to 10% and just start painting right into the center through here and create that natural vignette making my brush really big and just feathering it out gently now around the entire perimeter. And now we have a soft vignette that's pushing us in, inviting us into this story with Haley and all of this. My artistic enhancement process has many more steps to it. I add some details and some other different adjustment layers that infuse everything into it. And that's my process that I've taught myself over the years. And every single year, upon the advice of Salvatore Sincata, I change my, my look every year. And I, I add different colors. I add different things I learn along the way as I'm teaching myself Photoshop and actively learning from other teachers and other people who share their artwork and education, whether it be YouTube or conferences and so forth. I challenge you to do the same thing. Start designing a style that speaks to you. What are the colors that you like? What are your favorite colors? Do you like the HDR look? Do you not? Do you like a soft focus? Do you like extra lights? Do you like really vibrant color? Or do you want to leech it away? Find those things that resonate with you as an artist. Utilize these basic adjustment layers in Photoshop, which has been with Photoshop since ever, and start infusing it into your work. Learn why the layer blending modes do what they do. Play with them and experiment with them. Have the happy accidents of the nebula field swirling around your hair and going, oh my gosh, now I want to go in a different direction. Learn and remember, and most importantly, practice all the time. Practice your visions and your designs and practice your Photoshop retouching. And over time, you will build the skills to make artwork that tells amazing stories no matter where you go. 
This concludes our video today. Thank you so much for watching this and being a part of it. Again, YouTube community, thank you for finding this and finding this work here. Please like and subscribe and check out the other videos. Shutterfest community, one more time, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for letting me teach at Shutterfest. It's, it's just been a dream come true. I've been attending the conference five or six years. I was a student for several years, and then I got the privilege to teach, and I absolutely love it. Next year, if I'm invited back to teach, I've got grand plans for a huge After Hours cosplay event uh, that'll be bigger and better than the Game of Thrones, this is going to be awesome to do. I'm already planning on some concepts to teach, and uh, I just can't wait to create the artwork and see all of your smiling faces. Check out this video, the other videos on the site, and to both communities that I'm addressing. Please, I'm 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 asking for your help. Please share this with other people. Please tell people about this channel. Please share this video on social media right now, and let other people know that they can go on this journey of learning because it helps me to continue my path forward, and that means the world to me. It enables, with that support, it enables me to go further and farther, and I'm asking for your support and help in sharing my knowledge with you. Please, please check out McKennaPearl.com. They are a truly and fantastic group of people who care about the work and the quality and the consistency in their customer service. I print everything on metallic prints, uh, metallic paper or metal prints because it reproduces color really, really well. And as a business person, I know that I can depend upon McKenna to deliver every single time in their quality and consistency. And they're just a trusted partner that I, I would not be where I am today without them. They sponsored me at Shutterfest, and I am so incredibly grateful for that. So please check them out, McKennaPro.com. Check out the other videos on our site. And until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.